Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so first of all, before I answer the question, I just have to acknowledge um, what it means to be on this panel and why I'm terribly nervous because <laughs> in some ways, I'm, the, I'm like, you know, back in the old days of Sesame Street, it's like one of these things don't belong. <laughs> I'm like, I don't belong. <laughs> because I'm surrounded by heroes of mine. I mean, you know, when I was at Michigan, uh, University of Michigan as a young uh, associate professor, um, a young associate professor, I should say, um, you know, Clementine and the work that you're doing with SOSAD was so important. I mean, it was really legendary. And in fact, one thing I'm going to add is that the newsletter that came out, um, and I see Earl here, um, had some of the most important, one of the most important archives to really document uh, both the local struggle, but also thinking about how to deal with this, this um, crisis we're in. And it really was a crisis. You know, you took, you took hundreds of kids dying. And when we think about, even right now, what it means to talk about Black Lives Matter uh, and to think about it only in terms of state violence, was other forms of violence which is, which is tied to state violence, which I think that you really addressed. And, and also just to have all these great activists, which I, I look forward to hearing from, people I've been following and listening to for a long time. Um, I met uh, Jimmy once, although I've been reading his work since I was in high school. You know, uh, The American Revolution is one of the books I bought, I think, my first year in college uh, at a used bookstore. I think I paid $1.25 for it uh, at Acres and Acres of Books in Long Beach, California. Uh, and I still have my copy. Um, and so you've got to imagine the circumstance. I'm a young uh, professor at University of Michigan, really interested in Detroit. Of course, a big follower of the Boggs. Um, I go to a conference on CLR James at Brown University and spend the whole weekend hanging out with Grace, and she gave this devastating critique of CLR James in a room full of people who just adore him. <laughs> um, it was brilliant, and I had, to, I had to rethink everything, so I wrote, I, we flew back together, and I sat in the plane with her, and, um, and I had a copy of my book that I signed um, to Grace and Jimmy, and Jimmy, this is about 1992, so he was still driving. And I, he, he was in the car, we came up off the plane, Detroit Metro, and, I, and she introduced me to him, and we sat at the car for about you know, 20 minutes just talking. Uh, and then I didn't see him after that, so that was the last time. But I know, based on what Grace said to me and based on what Stephen said, he was reading my book. Um, for me, Jimmy represents the thinking of those very Alabama communists I write about. Uh, and let me explain why. I mean, if he were maybe five years older, he would have probably been a member. Uh, instead, he brought that revolutionary ideology to Detroit. So when he says in the film and also in the book um, that you know, living in Marion Junction, to be involved in the Scottsboro case meant that you could be lynched to be even talk about it. I mean, that's true. The kind of violence that people on the ground face. I mean, you could come out, 10,000 people can come out in, in, in Times Square or in Los Angeles or in Chicago talking about Freedom of Scottsboro Boys. But when you're in Alabama talking about that, as, as he did, as Rosa Parks did, as many others, you, your life was, was in, in peril. So in some ways, he both represented that spirit. He just brought it to Detroit. And more importantly, uh, he was anti-Stalinist in, in his interesting kind of way, meaning that he didn't really so much care about Stalin as much he cared about what was at the center of this revolutionary process. And for Alabama communists, um, they were not concerned about the inter-machinations of the Communist Party debates. They were concerned about what's going on there. Their most important document uh, as, as Jimmy said, in fact, at one point, if you read him, wasn't necessarily the Communist Manifesto. It wasn't what is to be done by Lenin. It was the Bible. That's what the Communist Party in Alabama, the black communists actually read and thought about in, in terms of developing a critique. And one other thing I just want to add to that is that Jimmy talks about um, being that third generation uh, from slavery. His grandmother told him stories of slavery. And one of the things that he says, he says, you know, the way my grandmother talked about slavery, uh, she didn't say we were freed. She didn't say Lincoln freed us. She said the South was defeated. They surrendered. Mm -hmm. That's a different way of thinking about yeah. 
the struggle. Yeah. And in some ways, that's why what I tried to write in that book, just coincidentally, um, really speaks to or resonates with that understanding that slavery was overthrown through the general strike, what we learned from Du Bois, that, that, um, that people not only made a way out of no way, but they developed a revolutionary ideology that was far more adva advanced than anything the Communist Party had actually embraced at the time. But it wasn't accepted. And that, to me, is the connection I see with Jimmy. Thank you for that more for that. So that article I referenced, but com Robin's comments um, remind us of something that we should be clear to say here, which is that Jimmy was a revolutionary. And in particular, he, he identified himself as a revolutionist, which he made it, at one point made a distinction between a revolutionary and revolutionist. Revolutionary is someone who believes that things should change and has ideas about how this new society should be, should be organized. That's a revolutionary. But a revolutionist believes things should be changed, has ideas about how, to how the world should be reorganized,